This video will hopefully help music students and not necessarily pianists get up and running at the piano with the ability to cite voice chords uh, usually expressed as a chord symbol such as G minor, C7, F major and be able to play those chords like they would be found in a real book or other kind of lead sheet. So let's get started on this most important progression, which is called the 251. Uh, a great resource for anything jazz is Jamie Abersold, and on his website he has a jazz handbook, which is tremendous. And on 51 are the very same voicings that uh, many people use as an entree. And these are the very same voicings that I am going to show you here, but with a visual method that will hopefully make the process quick, accurate, and helpful. Okay, so here is how to voice a two chord. Now this is just one very basic way to do it. It's root three, five, seven, nine of A minor. But you know, when you've got a bass player, pianists and guitarists probably don't need to play that root. And they generally don't. They actually might play this in their left hand. All right, or more likely down here. And then they're playing that as an A minor. All right. So the thing is, is that, that this right here became a serviceable voicing for a minor chord. Well, doesn't that look like a C major 7? C, E, G, B looks like a C major 7 chord. So, some piano teachers have called these grips. It's a, C, a major grip. And that right there is our voicing for a minor chord, at least our first voicing. Okay? So, if you can go C major grip, that's your voicing for A minor, which or A minor 9. Now, C looks just like F. All right? So, I and many people else are all very visual focused. That could look like, so you see that's all white notes. 1, 3, 5, 7. 1, 3, 5, 7 of an F major grip. Now, that's going to make a D minor. The C grip makes an A minor because the grip is from the minor third. Chances are you're going to look at some music and it's going to say play an A minor. Well, you know that's A. Now you go to the minor third and make the major grip and there, voila. All right, so those are some two fives that we'll get to soon. As said before, these major grips will become our voicing for minor chords. So we have C major grip, C, E, G, B is a C major arpeggio, which in our context makes a A minor. F makes a D minor. That's the flat three of D. So major grip on C looks like major grip on F because they're all white notes and they're all in that major third, perfect fifth, major seventh. Well, C and F look alike. E flat, A flat, and D flat look alike. So E flat, G, B flat, D it has a black, white, black, white for root major third, perfect fifth, major seventh of the grip. And again, that makes a C minor for us right now. E flat looks just like A flat major grip. A flat C, E flat G looks just like D flat F, A flat C. Okay, so try this. Try going back and forth with the lookalikes. C, F, C, F, C, 
and our lookalikes of E flat, A flat, D flat, E flat, E A flat, D flat. So try that a couple times. Right? So go back and forth on that. Then our last pit grouping of lookalikes are E, A, and D. Now, E, A, and D all have, again, root major third, perfect fifth, major seven as their um, intervals. But look, white, black, white, black, where E flat looks black, white, black, white. So that E flat is black, white, black, white. The E, A, and D is white, black, white, black. So go between those. Lock your hand and um, keep your grip and hopefully your um, accuracy will improve. All right, then, so we have three sets of lookalike, C and F or F and C pair, the E flat, A flat, D flat grouping, and our E, A, D grouping. All right, that, if you count that up, that's C, F, one, two, three, four, five, then six, seven, eight. That's eight out of the 12 notes that there are. The remaining four, I see them as two groupings. See G flat and G, or F sharp and G. And I see these kind of as a mirror, what I would call a mirror. See how that's G, B, D, F sharp? And then it's G flat, B flat, D flat, F. So G flat has three black and white. G has three white and black. Okay, same thing with B to B flat. There's a kind of a mirroring there. B, D sharp, F sharp, A sharp. B flat, D, F, A. So you see how B flat and B kind of mirror each other because it's one white and three black. Whoops, one black and three white. Then it's one white and three black. So B, and the thing is, is that, <clears throat> you know, guitars, basses, and keyboards often are visual with what they see. No one thinks twice about teaching a guitarist how to uh, use a fingering pattern. It's not very popular on piano, but I think that one should um, be open to every opportunity to see and learn. So I don't want you just to put your finger down and not know what the notes are, but I think my experience from playing the guitar and bass is such that you learn the patterns and then you learn the notes. And I always did well in theory classes because I would just envision it. And I think pianists do that too. So that's why we're learning it this way. All right, or I'm showing it to you this way. So in review, we have C and F as lookalikes. We have E flat, A flat, D flat as lookalikes. And we have E, A, D as lookalikes. And then we have these two pairs of what I would think of as mirrors, which is B flat to B, and then G flat to C, G flat to G. If you can go back and forth with these, boy, you're gonna get really good really fast because check this out. Work on those as pairs, right? Then go in the cycle of fifths, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, E, A, D, G, back to C. And if you can do that, you're on your way to making two chords, which will become the first part of our 2-5 and our 2-5-1, and being able to play chords on the piano.